Good morning, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the house of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. <coughs> and um, read along with me, because you know why? I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I make mistakes. I'm not infallible. This is infallible. I'm very fallible. So please read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Peace with all men and or the art of compromise. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I am a saint, and I want nothing to do with that which is called Christianity, because what is Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. But what is Christianity today has an agenda, and a lot of what is of Christianity about seeking peace with all men is all about compromise. And this is what Christianity does. Okay? This is what Christianity does. Why do they do this? Because Christianity has an agenda. It has an agenda. Number one, Christianity wants to get you into a phallus house, a church building. <clears throat> a building which is not um, authorized for us saints today. Okay, uh, in the description box there will be the two part, two videos done by our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley. Uh, he did the groundwork. He already did this. Uh, great videos that the Lord gave him to do, uh, going through the scriptures on church and churches and whatnot. And for us today, remember. God dwelleth in temples made without hands. Under the law it was different. Today our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay, The buildings are Roman Catholic. That comes from Rome. Okay, Christianity. You make the tie-ins. Is linked with Catholicism. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? That is something that the world called us. We never referred to ourselves as such, okay? But their agenda is they want to get you into a building. And there is a definite spirit attached to these buildings. There, oh, definitely there is, okay? But they want to get you into a building to number one, and ultimately to get your money. Because Christianity is a business, okay? It's a profession, not a passion. All right? All right? And see, when you are trying to get people, because like over here down the road at the Method uh, Methodist Church building, their little stupid marquee, they've had things like free cross training inside. It's good. And also, uh, how to get to heaven, details inside. They want to get you into the building, and they don't teach you truth. They, they speak unto you smooth things, okay? Why is that? Well, you don't want to offend people who might give you money, right? But this is what Christianity does. This is why you and I as saints ought to abhor Christianity. Christianity, we ought to abhor. This is what they do. Romans 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. As much as, so see, it's up to you. 
to do everything you can to live peaceably with those who reject the true Christ who is. Hmm. But see, it's up to you. You got to do everything. You got to bend backwards in order to live peaceably with people who don't want true peace. This is what Christianity teaches you. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. And I've heard some of these uh, Jesuit trained cemeterians in their church buildings actually go off of this, ver this very verse right here. Even as I please all men in all things. Don't scare them. Spit, don't scare them. Love them into the kingdom. How many of you have heard that disgusting phrase before? Hmm? That's the mindset. That's the mentality of Christianity. That is. And you all know that's the truth. That might not be your personal thing. And you're referring to yourself as a Christian. Why? I don't know. Whatever. But that might not be your thing, but Christianity in the whole, which is linked onto Mystery Babylon, that is their agenda. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. So see, don't scare them. Don't scare them. Love them into the kingdom. Don't, don't tell them. Get them into the building. So, and then we'll, we'll teach them things. But first, you know, just love them to death. Mm. And also, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And this is what Christianity does, people. And any of you who are involved in Christianity, you know this is what I'm saying to you is the truth. Some of you even practice this uh, methodology. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, huh? So see, with the verses we just looked at, as Christianity teaches you, as much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you, be at peace with all men. Well, let, let's, let's go over these verses again. Because, like I said, brethren, people, and, uh, you know, atheists and other uh, religions and stuff like this, when they, you know, from Christians, they hear this and they're like, wow, wow, okay? Romans 18, 12, 18. If possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So it's up to you. You gotta, you gotta compromise. You gotta be gentle. Paul tells us to be gentle. Uh, remember that gentleness that Paul's talking about is uh, referring on to not taking the entirety of Scripture and cramming it down someone's throat. Okay, the gentleness that Paul is talking about has nothing to do with compromising truth, which Christianity is all about. They don't want to scare you. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. They don't want to scare you. And in order for the Lord to save you, you got to have the hell scared out of you. You need the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a requirement. Oh, and see, that's another thing that Christianity does. Their God has no requirements. None. None. Brokenness is a requirement. Brokenness of your self-righteousness. Contrition is a requirement. You have to take responsibility and stop blaming others. Fear is a requirement. And see, without these, without these, 
you come to the Lord on a false premise. Those three things are required in you, of you. Okay? They are. But see, to, according to Christianity, who loves you unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. God, present tense, loves the Christ-rejecting sinner. No, he doesn't. No, he does not. But see, Christianity, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Exhaust everything. Do everything you can to be in peace with men who don't want true peace. 1 Corinthians 10, 33, Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Make everyone happy. Be a people pleaser. Don't scare them. Tell them good, sweet things, things they want to hear. Not necessarily what they need to hear, but tell them things. And what? And who doesn't want to hear? God loves you. God's not angry at you. Who doesn't want to hear that? Who doesn't seriously? Who seriously doesn't want to hear that? Hmm? Who seriously doesn't want to hear, just believe and receive? That's it. Broken, no, that's the, what, what's the phrase? Uh, uh, putting works into salvation. Uh, yeah, brokenness, no, that's a work. Contrition is a work. Fear of the Lord is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Prayer is a work. Really? Really? Yeah, just believe and receive. Who doesn't want to hear that? But see, a, a, a majority of people, not all, but a majority of people have enough sense to be like, you know, wait, okay, God loves me unconditionally, present tense, but if I don't believe like you do, he's going to send me to hell to burn forever. It doesn't make sense. Because what Christianity tells you is a lie. Okay, this is... This is why I personally am vehemently against Christianity. Because it is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? But this is what Christianity does. And then, of course, that uh, reference in Hebrews. In Hebrews 12, verse 14, again. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. 1 Corinthians 9, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 on to 22. And here's one that, oh, oh, here's one that, uh, that the Christians really like. And they twist it. Because in order, uh, according to Christianity, you are to be like the world to win the world. When in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Compromise. Ingratiate yourself to them by being as one of them. To them that are without law, as without law, being a hey, antinomian as idiot, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, law to Christ. Yeah. That I might gain them that are without law. Hmm. But verse 22, verse 22 is very important. To the weak became I as weak, that I may might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I am made all things. God orchestrated the circumstances. Paul went to where he was supposed to go. He didn't become... Among headhunters, he didn't become a headhunter. Among sodomites, he didn't become a sodomite. But he went onto these people as an ambassador of Christ. Not compromising truth as Christianity will have you to do 
in order to gain people. No. But Paul was sent of the Lord to these people. He was made. Made by who? The Lord. All things unto all men. Okay? Now, let's read the context of these cherry-picked verses. Because uh, a saying, uh, you dear brother, you know, when we read in Romans 12, verse 18, uh, if possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, uh, you're like, oh, Brad, that I know. Let's read the context now. Romans 12, 9, on to verse 18. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. Job, therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. We are to hate, abhor evil. But see, what's evil? What's good? See, the authorized version, the perfect and errant, given by inspiration word of God, tells you what is evil and what is good. But Christianity with their Jesuit trained textual critics, yea, hath God said, okay? See, in every society today, not just America, more so pronounced in America, but in every society, evil is good and good is evil. But what is evil? What is good? See, our judgment in and of ourselves is flawed. We can't judge right. We get close, but we can't have perfect judgment. Why? You need a perfect standard in order to judge yourself and to judge others. Okay? But right away, we are to hate what is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another in brotherly love. This is talking about between saints. That doesn't mean that you be a jerk to everyone else, okay? No, 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 that's not what that means. Context among saints, brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. We prefer our own for fellowship. For communion. What fellowship hath light with light with darkness? Hmm? What have I to do to be hanging out with those who are not of us? How can you as a saint stand to have fellowship with those who are not of us? That that that's full of wonder to me. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, and Jesus Christ is our hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. <coughs> Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Given to hospitality. I wonder how if, I, I've said this to you before, I wonder if some of these hot shot YouTube charlatan preachers, how they would react if all of a sudden from out of nowhere, a brother or a sister would come to their domicile, seeking it's like, hey, I just, I, I just had to come and see you. I wonder how they would react. Would they be hospitable? I wonder. I wonder. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? By being a living example of the truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? But what happens is when most people don't want to hear, hear the truth, What's left? Your conversation of your body language, how you behave, how you act. Okay? All right? 
verse 15, uh, you bless people with truth. You bless those who persecute you by being an example of the truth, giving them truth, living truth. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? And verse 15 is something that I have personally um, wanted to wrap my life around. Empathy. Empathy. Now, I'm not wearing your shoes and you're not wearing mine. Empathy can only go so far, but wanting to have an empathetic mindset for others. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. I don't know what you're going through. But as a brother, I can be with you there in weeping with you and rejoicing with you. And I think a lot of that, verse 15, is lost, even amongst a lot of saints today. Because you can't trust any, everyone nowadays. You know, everybody and their mother uh, who calls themselves a Christian, when you spend time with them or talk with them, it's like, dude, you're not saved at all. What's, what? What? But even among saints, there seems to be this hardness there. And this, this mustn't be there, brethren. This mustn't be, okay? Truth. The scripture is our standard. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Be of the same mind one toward another. Be of the same mind one toward another. Being a servant. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in, thy, in your own conceits. Condescend to men of low estate. So many of these Christian guys out there uh, who put themselves on this high horse, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna witness to them. They don't want me to witness. How do you know? Hmm? Hmm? I remember a certain uh, YouTube preacher made the the statement once that it's like, well, I'm not gonna go witness to, uh, or preach to Hamites. They don't want I, what? Excuse me. Excuse me? What if that's where the Lord wants you to go? I'm not going to go uh, preach to, or witness on to the homeless or be there with them because all they, you know, all they want is my... Uh, how, how do you know? What if that's where the Lord wants you to go? Way too many of you get yourselves on this high horse and forego opportunities that the Lord has orchestrated because you're thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think. We are, like Paul, to be made all things unto all men. Paul was sent unto people by the Lord. He didn't compromise truth and be as they are to win them. No, he went to these people. It didn't matter to whom. It was to whom the Lord sent them, sent him to. Recompense to no man evil for evil. And that's with an S, that's the verb. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. Now, with that context, okay, with the start abhorring that which is evil, anything that is contrary to the truth, how can we as saints compromise truth for the sake of fellowship or, or whatever? Oh, and now 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 24 under 33. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. 
Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that shoot it, and for the conscien and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Some guy invites you over, it's like, Hey Brad, come on, why don't you have dinner? And they ain't saints. Have dinner with us. Like, okay, fine. It's like, oh, and by the way, uh, I, before you uh, we did this. I prayed to um, uh, the god of Shintoism, or I prayed to Buddha. So like, oh, really? Okay, uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm I I can't eat this. Why? I mean, isn't it? Yeah, it looks good, but uh, you you offered this in prayer to Buddha for his sake. It's like, well, what's wrong with Buddha? Opportunity. Hmm? Opportunity. Conscience, I say, not of thy, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil, evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Where, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jew, nor to the Gentile, nor to the church of God. You're a saint. And you uh, go to a Hebraic Jew who believes that they, you know, they're not saved, but that, you know, they got to keep the, the kosher thing and, the, you know, that they can't eat pork, okay? Have a little, have a little uh, compassion. You know, that, you know, it's like, okay. All right, you don't, fine, okay? I'm your guest. Uh, you don't want, you, okay, okay, fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rob my liberty in your face. That's the point. That's the point. And see, that's something that like antinomianists do. And they don't even have the true God or true gospel to begin with. They rub their liberty to sin at will in people's face. We saints, we're not supposed to rub our liberty that we have in Christ in your face. We are to demonstrate it, yes. But we're not supposed to take it and smear it in your face like that. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay? Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. And also in Roman, and see, Paul talks about this in Romans 14. In Romans 14, 19 on to 21. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things whereby, wherewith one may edify another. For me destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. We can eat anything we want to eat today. The dietary restrictions, because, because of the circumcision made without hands, because of that, well, you and I can eat pork, we can eat shellfish, we can eat whatever we want to eat. Why you want to eat certain things you do? That's between you and the Lord. Whatever, okay? That's one of the things that we absolutely cannot judge other people on. Okay? You want to be a vegan? Why? I don't know. Knock yourself out. You want to keep kosher? Knock yourself out, man. You start saying that that's a salvific requirement today, that's the problem. That's the problem. It is not. Okay? It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. A Hebraic Jew who just gets saved, 
who is still in that transition period of like, oh, wow, you, you mean, like it says in Acts 15, I don't have to keep the law today to be right with God or to stay saved? No, you don't. Hey, hey, my Hebraic Jewish brother, have you ever had bacon before? No, I've never. It's great. Well, I'm not comfortable with that yet. Okay, hey, fine. Fine. Okay, fine. That, you know, right there. Right there. Okay? Someone who, a, 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 a Hebraic, a, that's a great example. A Hebraic Jew recently saved is still struggling with the thing about eating because that's what they're brought up in. You know, it's always pork, too. You know, they, they, they this thing about the pig is like, ugh, whatever. You, as a saint, you don't come along rubbing that liberty in their face and making them stumble. You know, have a little decency. It's like, okay, you, you don't know what you're missing, but hey, whatever, man. Whatever, let's have a good, let's have a good salad or something like that, okay? All right? Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Okay? Now, in Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, for context, 5 on to verse 17. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, fathers of our flesh. Okay, you can call your father, father. That in, uh, where is that, in Matthew, call no man father. Uh, that's as regards to a religious title. You know, the Catholic Jesuit priests, father so-and-so, okay? You can call your father, father, okay? And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Again, you have an earthen father. You love your earthen father. But you're afraid of doing wrong and to get his belt against your rear end, right? So you fear your father, but you love him. And see, in a society such as America, where man has been emasculated and turned effeminate to a point, um, this concept of fearing father, loving father, but fearing father, is almost unheard of, especially with the young kids nowadays okay uh, I know of uh, an individual who's going through some uh, who unfortunately is going through a divorce and his own son ha has decided to stand up to his father who loves him and is being combative toward his father see that fear of father that love of father is not there it's missing okay that's a, that's a scriptural concept. How are you to love someone you're afraid of? You have a father of your flesh. Do you not love him? Uh, would you not fear him if you did wrong and he got the belt out and whooped you on your rear end? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our own profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness 
unto them which are exercised thereby. There again, like I've said to you before, you and I as saints, we can't, well, sometimes we can, but most of the times you and I as saints are not going to see the actual chastening of a brother or a sister. Okay? Sometimes we can. Okay? For, for example, I'm still sick. Okay? I've had this, my sore throat uh, went into this horrific cough. You know, the cough that was so bad that it hurts in your temples and the top of your head and wheezing and stuff like that. And all the while I was thinking, okay, Lord, you know, searching the scriptures. What did I do? Where, where, what, what have I done? Where, where am I wrong? Am I off? What, what do you want me? Why, why, what's, what's going on? What did I do? Okay. Better to err, dear brethren. Better to err in first looking inward than immediately pointing the finger. Now, there are cases, obviously, where you can't. It's like, hey, it's because of... There are, there are. But more often than not, it's better for you to err first than thinking it's like, okay, there's something going on, okay? Like, uh, like the brother said, it's like, it's funny. You get back to Illinois and you get sick. Are you sick of Illinois? And you think so? <laughs> but it's like, okay, first and foremost, like, okay, Lord, what's going on? This never happens. This rarely happens. Twice in one year now, I've gotten really sick. Once a couple months, a few months ago, uh, well, it was still winter, uh, before we went to like this funeral, I got this uh, horrendous sickness <coughs> that made me bedridden for at least three days where I did nothing <coughs> but lay in bed for three days. It was horrible. And now I got, I got this. Okay? And uh, right away, you know, search the scriptures. It's like, okay, Lord, give me eyes to see. What am I missing? Have I done something? Have I said something? Have I done something? Am I doing something? You don't like, what, 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 tell me. Show me thy truth. Show me my error. Show me what's wrong. That takes a lot of courage. That's why a lot of saint, even saints don't like to do that. See, because when you do that, you cut away the woman thou gavest me to be with. She did give me of the tree, and I did eat. See, and that's the, that's the difference between a saint and a Christian. A saint, sooner or later, you have to be like, okay, okay all right, strip away everything. This is my fault. What, let me look at me, okay? And see, after you are brought through that chastisement, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And that, brethren, you and I can see. We can see the peaceable fruit of righteousness of one who has come out of chastisement. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet. Turn not to the right hand or to the left, Remove thy foot from evil, as it says in Proverbs 4. Okay? Make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let, let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Ah, bitter, bitterness. Ooh, many of us, <laughs> many of us can fall into that root of bitterness. Link for a video on that in the description box. 
Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. And remember, God hated Esau. It does not say that God hated Esau's sin. God hated Esau him. Okay? It said, find it. Find it that God hated Esau's sin. No, God hated Esau. Why? Because Esau, his God was his belly. Flesh was his belly. He sold his birthright to Jacob for soup. Okay? All right? Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Yeah, he blew it. Because why? His God was his belly. And that's the thing with Christianity, dear friend. Your belly, flesh, is your God. That's why it's like, oh, don't scare people. Love them and they, they don't don't tell them that kind of stuff. Listen, it's hate. It's nothing but hatred to withhold truth from people. Okay, compromise. See, the art of compromise is what Christianity is. They will have you compromise truth in order to get people to come to a building. Okay, heresy, wicked, evil. Okay, you don't compromise truth. You don't compromise truth. Luke 9. And this, this is something that actually crosses dispensational lines. Luke 9. 23 unto 26. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Because you are either because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of your mouth. See the shade of gray. Option C, which there is none. And that is what makes the Lord sick. Christianity and all its denominations, including King James Bible believing Christianity, all of the uh, denominations of Christianity make our Lord sick. Hey, King James Bible believing Christian, you know you've compromised your uh, truth and have made yourself of the number? You have. You have. You're another denomination of what something that the Lord has never sanctified. Christianity. You've compromised truth to establish your own little denomination. Bravo. Bravo. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. And shine every single one of them red pennies, you wicked charlatan putts. Anyway, verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and, in the whole, and of the holy angels. Now, this doesn't mean that you be void of tact. Okay. Listen. Unless you repent of your self-righteousness and be a man or a woman and take responsibility for what you did, putting Christ on the cross like that and have the hell scared out of you, guess what? You're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. Okay? Unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. All right? 
But no, Christianity, God loves you. God's not angry at you. God is angry at the wicked every day. You reject Christ, God's wrath is for you. God's love is not for you. Do you understand? This God loves you? God's not angry at you? That's a lie. You reject Christ, God's wrath is for you. God's love is to be had, but see, you have to go the way that he has prescribed. Broken, contrite, fear of the Lord. And see, the concept that no, no lost person gets, calling on the name of the Lord. See, and when you're broken, when you stop pointing the finger at other people, well, if you've been through what I've been through, you would no, I wouldn't. I beg your pardon for this phraseology. What a piss poor excuse that is to say something like that, man. That 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 spake volumes. That spake volumes. Who says that? The woman thou gavest me to be with. She did give me of the tree and I did eat. That's who says that. The old man. But see, what does Christianity do again? Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verses 8 on to verse 11. And see, brethren, we're going over this because <laughs> we, we got to... You know, brethren, we can't compromise truth. There is tact. Okay? And see, that is where the Lord will guide you. All right? There is a thing called tact. You know, a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. There's a time and a place. You know, we as saints, you know, sometimes we go in as a bull in a china shop. Amen. You know, that's... That's something that I'm actually myself have been used quite specifically for. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you, uh, sometimes a dude's just got to let it all out on you. Like the one hemetic brother who chewed me out over the phone and cussed and swore at me and just, oh, unloaded on me. And then afterwards, I was like, are you finished? Then we talked. And that man came to the Lord and genuinely got saved. Okay? He was once, a, he was a part of the black Hebrew Israelite thing. He got a hold of me email, uh, through email. I, I gave him my number. The dude just went off on me. Swore, cussed, called me all kinds of stuff. I, I forget. For, I, I forget me. It felt like forever. <clears throat> but afterwards, it's like, are you finished? Now, let's reason together, you and I. Okay? But see, that's where the guiding of the Holy Ghost comes in. That's where we our obedience onto His guiding comes in. We see, we, we don't, and see, and this is the problem with a lot of these Christians. They want to make a name for themselves. Put another notch in their belt. They have a ministry to uphold. They have a reputation to uphold. But Christianity. Isaiah 30, 8 unto 11. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this, is, that this is a rebellious people lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't even have to pray. Just believe and receive. Which say to the seers, see not, 
and to the prophets, prophesy not to us, not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Turn aside out on the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And the Christ, the Jesus Christ of the authorized version, who puts his finger on that one thing you lack, was very confronting. But he, the rich young ruler, he came to him, when he came to him, he beheld the rich young ruler and loved him in telling him, one thing you lack. One thing you lack. He did it out of love. But that truth, that love and truth hurt. See, that's the point. Truth at first is painful. And truth cannot be a glory until it, unless it is first a suffering. And what kind of suffering is there when you get mixed up with this nonsensical God loves you, God's not angry at you, just believe and receive. And also, Amos 7, Amos 7, verses 10 on to 13. And the Christians, when they encounter a saint, then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall, be, shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it's the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. King nothing. Hmm. It's like he said he's, he's speaking contrary things. It's like you talk about with Christians about rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? That God is a God of wrath and judgment. Okay? As well as love, obviously. Okay? That repentance is of self-righteousness. Manning up, taking responsibility. Fear of the Lord. Unto a Christian, that's foreign. Huh? And see, when you a saint are in the midst of those, it's like, they're... they're you know what they do? It's Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah 38. How many of you have encountered this? And one, or one brother, I, I know you have. Jeremiah 38, 1 through 4. Then Shephatiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, and Jugal, the son of Shelemiah, and Peshur, the son of Melchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, <coughs> by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for, she, for he shall have his life for prey, and shall live. Thus saith the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. That's God's judgment against Israel. Disaster is coming. You and I as saints, we're out there warning the lost, warning these Christians. Judgment is coming. The time of Jacob's trouble is coming. 
the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh, which a lot of Christians don't believe in. Some do, but a majority of them don't. Okay? And we warn the lost by warning them of judgment that's coming. Verse 4. Therefore the princes said unto the king, the princes, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city, and the hands of all the people in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. And all of Jeremiah that he was preaching was for the welfare of the people. See, at this time, they had gone past the point where God had no choice but to exact judgment upon them. There, there was no, you know, God's a God of righteousness, a God of judgment. Okay? You can only go so far until you leave him with no other choice than where he has to, because of his perfect character, to exact righteous judgment by desolating Israel because of what they did. But his mercy was there. It's like, hey, okay, you, my judgment, yeah, okay, you guys are done, but here's my mercy for you. Accede to the chastisement. Accede to what I am bringing on you because of what you have done. Surrender to Chaldea, and it will be well with you. That was God's mercy. But see, and that was for the welfare of the people. But see, the princes, it's like, he's, he's not pretty. He doesn't seek the welfare, but the hurt. And that's what a Christian, that's what Christianity, especially, that, and I've encountered this in the buildings. It's like, you're trying to hurt, you're trying to scare people. You're trying to hurt people. I'm telling people of the true Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures. You're lying to people, Christian. You're lying to people and patting them on the back as they're about to go headlong off of a cliff. God loves you. Believe and receive. Galatians 1. And brethren, this is to encourage you to not faint. To not compromise, no matter what the situation is. Tact is involved, yes. Decency, yes. But the time is short, brethren. Galatians 1. Now see, Christians also will be saying like, well see, Paul pleased all men. We, we read the context of that. But see, what do you do with Galatians 1? Verses 6 on 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that calleth you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Yes, God loves you uh, unconditionally. God loves the Christ-rejecting sinner. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. That's a perversion of the gospel. That's another gospel. That's another Jesus. Okay? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Well, wow, that's a contradiction, isn't it? Well, yeah, if you cherry pick Romans 12, 18, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 33, Hebrews 12, 14, if you cherry pick and then bring that verse up, yeah, but when you take in the context of all things, Paul wasn't a people pleaser. Paul didn't compromise truth in order to win people over. But he did on one occasion. We're going to look at that. Verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, 
that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hmm. And see, this gospel that is preached of Christianity, God loves you unconditionally. God loves the uh, present tense Christ-rejecting sinner. God's not angry at you. God has no requirements. Just believe and receive. The gospel that is the death, burial, and the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross, death, brethren, people, death. There has to be a death. There has to be a death of yourself. That's a requirement. See, in order for the gospel to be a glory, it has to hurt. Pain, dear brethren. Pain. Which Christianity wants to avoid. Pain. The pain that you can't save yourself. The pain that no matter what you do, you're not good enough. The pain that you can't blame other people. But it's all on you. That hurts. That hurts. The gospel that is. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That is a gospel based in death. That begins with death. Death, burial, and resurrection. Being made a new creature. Okay? The necessity of death. But who likes that? No one. No one. That's why we're the savor of death unto death unto some but also the savor of life unto life unto others. Because we who are saints, who represent the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that we preach, that there is none righteous, no, not one. Okay? That hurts. That hurts. But see, now, this thing about compromise, Paul did compromise once. He sure did. Acts 21. We have a video on this where we get into this uh, quite in depth, which will be in the uh, description box. But Acts 21. We see a scriptural example of compromise. Verses 18 on to 30 in Acts 21. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James. And all the elders were present. Oh, our beloved brother James. Not the son of Zebedee, but James, who was the author of the book of James. Who And the book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. James, our brother who is in heaven, had a problem. Saved man a saint. Amen. But he had the us and them mentality. He had, well, the Gentiles, but we Jews. James struggled with that. He did. He truly did. Okay. Verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the custom. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together 
for they will hear that thou art come. And they settle this in Acts chapter 15. Circumcision is not a scriptural requirement to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God today. It is not a scriptural salvific requirement. Right here, these Jews that were zealous of the law were still believing that it was. Paul preached contrary to the salvific requirement of circumcision of the flesh. We covered this on Monday's video, okay? The need of circumcision. There is a circumcision made without hands. A spiritual one, if you will, not a physical one, okay? Which, uh, yes, uh, Monday's video will be in the description box, okay? So right away, we see a problem here. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. <clears throat> Do this, do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly, and keepest the law. Keeping the law for salvation was not a requirement. Paul said, "If you uh, if you are circumcised, Christ uh, if you know if you circumcise seeking to keep, put yourself under the law, Christ profiteth you nothing. Why? Because you're seeking to justify yourself by your own means of the law rather than being justified by grace through faith. Totally contrary to what Paul was preaching." And James was telling him, it's like, hey, do this in order that everyone comes together. Compromise. Paul knew better. But what does Paul do? And right here, verse 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. See, James' problem, the us and them. There's one body. There is where there is no Jew nor Greek, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, a male or female. We are all one in Christ Jesus salvifically. Culturally, there are differences. Salvifically, we are all one. James struggled with that. Obviously. Look at 24 and 25. Okay? We Jews, we, we have all these things we have to do. But the Gentiles, they don't, they're not like us. And the, the middle, middle wall of partition was taken, down, was taken down of twain making one man. Okay? Paul was in a conundrum there because James was presenting to him something that Paul deep down knew was contrary to the truth. Let's continue. Then Paul took the men. Paul compromised. And the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. One offering made for sin, the blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. No more offering for sins of the blood of animals, of bulls and goats. Okay? They were still doing that. And James knew the truth was still allotting for that amongst the Jews because they were zealous of the law and they settled this in Acts 15. But yet he was still going along with it. And when the seven days were almost ended, that's significant, and we talk about this in the Acts 21 video, which will be in the description box, 
That means that the offering had yet, uh, hadn't been offered yet. That's when the Lord gets involved. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law, and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple, and hath polluted this holy place. So see, everything that Paul did in far as compromising the truth to pacify just there went upended. Anyway, it was all for naught. But see, before the day, seven days were almost ended, meaning a blood sacrifice had yet to be offered, the Lord allowed this to happen before Paul could do, I mean, and think about that. Paul who knew, Paul had to have known that he was doing kind of, he had to have. Paul sinned in this. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He was doing contrary to the truth knowingly. For the sake of compromise, he compromised truth in order that what? The multitude must needs come together. And what happened? What happened? For, verse 29. For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. So, Paul's attempt at compromise, which he knew, he had, come on, Paul, you think he didn't know what he was doing was wrong? And the Lord intervened there. Before the, and when the seven days were almost ended, the seventh day, that's when the sacrifice would have been offered. Contrary to the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross. Paul knew what he was doing was wrong. And the Lord allowed that to happen. Got Paul out of there before he made it worse for himself. There's your compromise for you, Christian. Oh, and oh, there's another example of someone who compromised. The more well-known one that most people are aware of. Peter. Peter. Galatians 2, verses 11 on to verse 18. But when, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, there's our, I, I love our brother James, our dear, dearly beloved brother James. James' problem was, the us and them mentality. We, we, we just kind of, uh, that, that we expound on that in depth in the Acts 21 uh, video, the Lord's will be done, but not our way. Okay, that uh, I'll put in the brackets, Acts 21, so you can identify it, okay? Our brother James, bless his heart and soul, beloved brother, our brother, love him dearly. He had his problems. And his problem was the us and them mentality. That we're Jews, we're better than you. He did. Well, you know, you, you Gentiles, you, you do. But we, we, he had that mentality. Which is contrary to the doctrine today. The Hebraic Jew is the apple of God's eye. Amen, amen, amen. But God is not a respecter of persons today. James' problem was that he couldn't get past, seemingly, that respecter of persons thing. Anyway, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. So they compromised the truth in order to make a certain group happy. And see what, ha what happened. 
Others were affected, infected by it, who knew the truth. And, and even though Peter sometimes uh, really wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, <laughs> sometimes Peter, Peter would have, you know, Peter did some stupid things. Yes, he did. Um, but did Peter know what he was doing was wrong? Absolutely he did. But see, a scriptural example of the compromise. And this is the compromise that Christianity, we all must needs come together. So compromise truth that we must, that we might all come together. That's what Christianity does, people. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And again, like I said, they, they settled this in Acts 15. This was just residual stuff. We who are Jews by nature, not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. <coughs> and that's not meaning that we have the actual literal faith of Jesus Christ. Okay, That's what that idiot Scott tries to tell you. Um, uh, the faith faith of Christ will be in the description box where we uh, scripturally refute Scott's stupidity. Okay? <clears throat> Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also, we ourselves also are found sinners. Yeah, if it's Christ's actual faith and not our own, why are we sinning? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Anyway, meaning that to believe that your faith isn't yours but actually Jesus' faith is absolute stupidity. Anyway, absolute stupidity. Stupid. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Hmm. Hmm. And Philippians chapter 4. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Like I said, I'm still not feeling uh, well. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably at about 90% right now. Praise the Lord. But Philippians 4, verses 4 on to verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And how is that be known? either by word or by deed. Okay? Be careful for nothing, but by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And this doesn't mean that you be flippant or anything like that. No. Finally, brethren, oh, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, knowing that you're doing it His way and not yours. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. 
And that does not mean to compromise truth, which Christianity will have you to do. First Peter 4, First Peter 4, verses 7 on to 11. First Peter 4, 7 on to 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity, self-sacrifice, among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to, to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God is the one who orchestrates the circumstances. We are to follow God's leading. He doesn't force us to do. He doesn't hold us at gunpoint. But we are to follow his leading. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, it is God who orchestrates, like he did with Paul. Paul was made all things unto all men. Okay? God will put you, God will lead you into circumstances that you never even thought were possible. That it's like, wow, I can't believe. You want me to go do this? Yes. What if he does? What if he does? Okay? But see what happens. What happens? Today, Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. And, and like we just read in Philippians, you know, in Philippians 4, verse 8. Let's go read that again. Philippians 4, verse 8. We are to go as the Lord uh, guides us. And God will not have us compromise truth. Christianity wants you to compromise truth. They don't have truth to begin with. But see, it's all about winning people over to bring you onto a building. But see, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Jesus Christ, he is the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. But what has happened today? <coughs> Isaiah 5, 20 on to 25. Isaiah 5, 20 on to 25. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, those who compromise truth, that call evil good. God loves you. God's not angry at you. God has no requirements. Just believe and receive. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked. For reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Well, yea, hath God said, the Greek says that. What's Greek? <laughs> Do we have a perfect standard, Christian? 
Well, the originals, all oh, the originals that don't exist. Yeah. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. That's today. Especially in Christianity, evil is good and good is evil. Ephesians 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. We're almost done. Besides, I'm, I'm getting a little, uh, <laughs> like I said, I, I'm still not 100%. I'm, uh, like I said, I, I, I'm 90% at the moment. I feel a lot better than I did yesterday and even Monday, but you needed to know that. Ephesians 4, 1 on to verse 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the capitalist spirit in the bond of peace. Amongst brethren, Unfortunately, today, that's not the case. Unfortunately. There are saints that just can't get along. Uh, I'll give you an example, and I'm going to name this individual. A divisive inerrantist. Okay? Who was, uh, who was deceived by a vile, wicked Canadian. I miss that man. I believe that man a brother. I really do. He's also um, neck deep involved in the with the guy from Maine and all, and that whole group thing that he's got. But I miss that man, um, and I st I pray for that man. I I believe that man is our brother. I really do. Um, but he because uh, you know the guy he follows uh, calls me a heretic because I speak against. Christ's Mass, and uh, I uh, I don't like his the, the little jerk uh, Jake the jerk who I don't think is saved. Unfortunately, flesh has divided that, and that's that's an example right there. Um, you know, I wish we could have fellowship. He and I, I do. I miss that man. I I, I enjoyed the fellowship that we had. Unfortunately, he was deceived by a vile, wicked Canadian man. But uh, that's that's someone who I wish I could have fellowship with today. I, I really do. I really I think he is our brother. I do. Uh, he probably doesn't think that of me. That's fine. Okay. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, and flesh is always the culprit. Flesh is always the culprit. Saints can't always get along, but we are too endeavoring to keep the unity of the capitalist spirit in the bond of peace. Sometimes, in order to keep that bond of peace, brethren, saints who can't get along, it's best sometimes that they stay apart from each other. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There are other examples of people out there who I think are saved, who I would like to have fellowship with and talk to, but yet they, um, you know, for whatever, for whatever reason, uh, they, they, they don't, they don't want to talk to me. And that's fine, you know. Barnabas and Paul, two saved men. Flesh got in the way and doctrinal issues got into the way there and they split asunder. Peace. Because if they stayed together, who knows what kind of uh, things would have happened. Okay? But the reality is, dear brethren, unfortunately, we always saints aren't getting along. I wish it wasn't that way. I, I, I really I wish it wasn't that way. Again, and I, I'm just saying the guy's channel name, not his real name. But again, uh, divisive inerrantist is a good example. 
uh, I, I really wish I could have a uh, fellowship with that man again and uh, you know bring him in to the fellowship that we have uh, amongst the brethren I really do uh, I miss that man uh, he's a sweet guy he really is but he he's he, he's off in his own thing I don't know what he's doing um, and whatnot and that's fine okay but like I said unfortunately unfortunately all of us saints aren't going to get along. I wish it was. But see, again, if that man were out of the blue one day, get a hold of me. It's like, Brad, I, I really need to talk to you. I'd be like, okay, brother. Talk. Let's, let's, let's talk. I, for a saint who I don't like, and there are people who I believe are saints who I don't like at all, and they don't like me. If they came to me in a pinch, if a saint who I did not like were to suddenly knock on our apartment door out of nowhere, it's like, hey, Brad, I had no other choice. I had to come. Not grudgingly. Come on, brother. Come on in. Come on. Uh, I know you don't. Look, you're here. Let's talk. My home is your home. Come on. That's what we're supposed to be for each other. Can you do that? Can I? There is one body. And this is pertinent to read, especially with what we looked at about our dear brother James, who was, who was in line with the two body, one of the Jew and one of the Gentiles. And see Paul getting uh, compromising as he did in Acts twenty one. Yeah, that that was that was a that was a blunder on Paul's part. That was a blunder on Paul's part. And see, that's why you know about the scripture. We saw Paul's mistake when, for example, when I make a mistake. You're going to see it. I'm going to allow you to be aware of my mistake. Why? I'm just a man, dude. And see, when you got these preachers who have this fairy tale image they want to uphold as this righteous, holy man of God and sweep uh, uh, things under the carpet and try to hide things. Hide them. Now granted, you don't do your dirty laundry in public. I'll grant you that. Amen. But you know, like, when you make a mistake, let it be known. That's, that's a part of transparency. See, because when you get these guys who put on this facade to be this man of this righteous holy man of God and yet not approachable not relatable I sin every day I make mistakes every day we're supposed to be relatable to one another because we are going through the same things knowing that our brother, brethren are going through the same things all over the world. See, that's the, uh, that's the part of transparency of this, brother. That's why that needs to be there. And that's why, and like I said, you don't do your dirty laundry in public, or else guys like the guy from Blackpool broadcast that all over the news and all kinds of stuff like that, okay? And other devils like that. Okay? But when it comes to making mistakes, making errors, let them be known. Because, see, I'm just a man. And the problem is, especially with you King James Bible believing Christians, the people you're listening to, you don't see them as a man, do you? Oh, oh, I know you don't. 
Oh, I, I know, I know of especially a few uh, sisters, even. Not ones that I have fellowship with or that we talk to. Uh, but I know of some sisters out there who put a certain individual up on a high horse there. And they don't even see that guy as a man, but as a ah, holiness. That, that ought to make you sick. That ought to make you sick that people look at you like that. That people have you in that high regard. It's like, dude, dude I'm, just, I'm just a man. Whoa, whoa. I, I, I've, I've, enco I've encountered that personally before. It's like, oh, I'm d d d d dude, <laughs> I'm worse than you. Dumb, dumb, who am I? I'm just a man, dude. Okay, who am I? There is one body and one capital S spirit who dwells in us all. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Those who are saved. I've heard Christians uh, try to take verse 6 and say that lost people have God within them. No, they don't. The God of this world, whom they're actually referring to, yes, but the God who is, no. No. See, you're a saint, you're saved, you have God in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. But also see, there is also that aspect of people who don't want to hear the truth. And that's when it comes to the Lord's guiding you. And where you have to accede to the Lord's guiding. Okay, you really do. Because there are certain people that you will encounter who just don't want to hear it, man. And that's when you go to Matthew 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Like in Acts, this, the Holy Ghost didn't suffer them to go to certain parts in Asia, but wanted them to go elsewhere. Why? Well, he had his reasons, but there are some times when people just don't want to hear the truth. There, are, there does come times, brethren, where you are actually wasting your time with people. I know, I know that that's, that's so horrible to say, isn't it? But, I mean, for example, for an example, Dade Murphy, that crazy devil guy, okay? It would be a waste of both of our times. If I were to try to go and witness to that man, because he's made his choice, okay? It would be, apparently, it would be a waste of time to probably go to Dr. Berg and witness to that man. He is a Scientologist, and he believes he is his own God. And uh, it would probably be a waste of time to try to talk to him about true salvation. I, I don't know. I'll never get the chance, but there are certain people. Not that God can't save them, but see, when you make a choice, you can go past a point where you can't turn back because you have made the choice to go on contrary to the Lord. The Lord can save anybody, but not at gunpoint. And also, too, the pearl thing. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verses 45 on to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearl who when he had found one pearl of great price, 
went and sold all that he had and bought it. People in this context, number one, <laughs> but people have sort of like to, well, that's description. <laughs> Uh, I, that, that sounds good, but our Lord Jesus Christ is precious. He is that precious cornerstone. The pearl of great price. Who is that? I'll leave that up to you to decide. That is going to be it for this little video today. More of an encouragement for you, dear brethren, to uh, not faint, to stay strong in the Lord and the work that he has called you on to, to do. Um, thank you for watching this if you do. Hope this helps you, helps, hope this encourages you. Don't compromise. Never compromise truth. Never compromise truth. Please keep us in your prayers. Like I said, I, I am not 100%. Not feeling still all that well, but uh, anyway, thank you, brethren. I love you. I'm going to get this uploaded, and we will see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.